there was a really wonderful butchy cowgirl dykey poet who did a really nice piece about making love to a woman like it was a creature from the ocean and then she picked up this big conch shell and she played it she blew it you know like a trumpet putting her hand inside of it and out so it kept making like orgasm sounds there was a queer burlesque act um and there was let's see, oh, these two women that looked almost exactly alike and they had their hair in buns with um little twinkly things and they were both wearing matching spandex uh body suits that were purple with yellow flames on the top just like real circus performers and they did a um gymnastics acrobatic act you know holding each other up and it's awesome um oh gosh i'm gonna leave so many people out and there was so much good stuff there's a woman who who is a sexual abuse survivor who uh, tied a rope harness to herself and got on a big hoop suspended from the ceiling. It must be professional equipment because it looked like trapeze equipment. Huge. In these really beautiful boots that came up to her knees, they were black patent leather with stiletto heels and um, buckles all the way up the um, shin. And she suspended herself upside down. She took a big knife out of her boot, big knife, and she cut away her shirt. And then she cut away the harness to symbolize liberating herself from the bondage of the sexual abuse. There is a new sex shop in town. I wouldn't want to call it that. I'll try to put the link in the underbar because I can't remember names right now. But apparently the two women who own it are part of the sponsors. And it's a wonderful vibe. It must be a brilliant shop. Very sex positive. Um, and they do a lot of classes and workshops. Uh, the woman who did the suspension from the hoop is going to be teaching a tantric yoga shop. And they do... Uh, sex education for adults and they're very articulate about queer identities and inclusiveness and acceptance it was a it was a beautiful beautiful space oh the space about six years ago or so i had looked at some art studio space in an old factory near old town um it's on fifth street uh, I think they only had about three tenants back then, and I turned it down because it wasn't soundproof enough to do radio. Well, it's still there, and it's thriving, and there's art all over the place. As you come up the ramp, they don't even bother with stairs, they just have a ramp. As you come up the ramp, there's a little fountain with a mechanism with shoes, so it looks like these two feet are walking on water, and there's... A sculpture of bicycles welded to one of those bike frames that does a loop-de-loop. -loop. The bike frame is upright and the bikes are just welded on. The bike rack is blue and then each bicycle is monochrome painted a different color of shiny enamel in primary colors. A lot of metal work. A lot of really interesting art. Really interesting art. Anyway, this was in the great room which had a little coffee bar and nice stage it's a big facility it's it's beautiful space uh there were at least 50 people there probably more i got there way too early fortunately there was a copy of carl sagan's cosmos so i sat and read that but somebody cut pictures out of it Woo! i should tell you that on the way in it was very windy and what would have been puffy clouds 
were getting pulled apart like taffy, and the sun was setting. And these clouds were glowing like orange sherbet, and they looked like dancers' legs because they were extended, and one of them had a fully formed thigh and calf and foot. Just beautiful. The light was just dashing. So I got there way too early. I went to the wrong address. I went to 1517. No lights were on. I was way too early, though. So I went into Old Town to one of my favorite places. That I used to live over there with my ex. It was in, within walking distance. It's called the Golden Crown Panaderia, which means bakery. And it's real Mexican and New Mexican breads. He's famous for his breads. I'll try to post some pictures in this video. Uh, that little butch who did the poetry. Talking about being an optimist by choice, not because she's naive. Because she's been through shit and she knows. And then there was a little discussion kind of thing where the people who were moderating it talked too much from the stage, of course. And the audience could only give little one-word answers about what queer means. And finally, they were talking about acceptance. And how many of you came here tonight thinking you wouldn't be accepted even in a room full of queers? And hands went up all over. People talked about that a little, and then I stood up. And I was shaking, and I said, could somebody please let me hold on to them? And little teddy bear that I'd met through, uh, what's the group called? It's called Fet Life. Fet Life. Uh, teddy, he's not little. Big teddy bear that I'd met through there. He's one of the greeters for this group. Um, his companion took my hand. And some women that were sitting on the floor held me, touched me. I said, I'm not just going to say a word or two or a sentence. And I told them where I live. And I told them that I'm stranded. And I told them that the landlord is an ex-cop and a Bible thumper. Self-described Bible thumper. And that um, being out is really dangerous. And I'm stranded out here. And uh, even with all that, I started a YouTube channel that was atheist still is but you know and i started that genderqueer atheist page on youtube and i said if you think my story is hard you should hear their stories and they just keep coming and they applauded the room applauded and then I said, the reason I'm here tonight is because I joined Fet Life today. And there was a lot of whooping and hollering and stuff. And I said, I just want to thank whoever's responsible for, for organizing this. Bravo. And they were all cheering. So afterward, people were coming up to me and hugging me and talking to me for a long time. I mean, listening to me. And talking to me and asking pointed questions, not not anything superficial and silly. And um, I found out that um, apparently trans men find me attractive. Uh, three very, very polite trans men, one at a time, came up and introduced themselves to me and made a point of making sure they were touching me and... It was very nice. So let's see. I left out some of the stuff, and that's too bad because it was just awesome. But I'm overwhelmed, and I'm exhausted, and I'm cold. It's 1 o'clock in the morning here. I'm not up this late unless I'm just pooping around on the computer. I'm going to show you something. Oh! Okay. Let's see. 
supposed to eat brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Now you're really supposed to eat three cups of each of these a day. Brightly colored vegetables, leafy vegetables, and cabbage-like vegetables. Three cups per meal. I would have diarrhea so bad. So we're not doing that right away. Oh, you're also, oh, here, here's some tomatoes. I actually have two cabbages. Got one from two different stores. I have three cabbages. It's about a purple one. And, ooh, these onions were only 49 cents a pound. I love red onions. So there's going to be, I'm going to make pickled cabbage with um, Japanese um, rice wine vinegar. And a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of ginger. And then, oops. I know she says you're not supposed to eat bread because of bread allergies, but my gosh. These were only 59 cents each. This one's sesame. This one's puppy. <coughs> and I have that great one treat. God, this smells good. Mm. And then I got um, bok choy and... Um, uh, Chinese cabbage, and there's another thing of cabbage in there. I had to put them on my credit card. The food stamps ran out. I mean, I didn't put all of it on the credit card, but the food stamps ran out. So, between that and the fact that it cost $20 for the gas to go out there. I had to go. I joined Fet Life today. Because there's a Japanese art form of rope bondage. And it's it's Japanese. So it needs to be done artistically and well and not sloppily and not stupidly. Because you're talking about another human being's body. And I joined Fet Life because I wanted to learn how to do it. So far, I haven't gotten any takers. And if that woman's harness tonight was any indication, I don't think people out here know how to do that very well. Except that teddy bear guy. I saw some pictures of him on the website, and um, it looks like whoever's uh, putting him in harnesses and stuff knows what they're doing. Looks like it. I mean, by comparison to other stuff I'm seeing on, um, like, YouTube videos and um, reputable websites, not Porn dog porny sites. Um, whew. so I told them I need to come home. I told them I'm stranded and alone and in isolation, and I need to come home. And I don't know what that what'll come of that, but um, Teddy Bear suggested that they have a classified uh, forum, so Teddy Bear suggested I put a out on the classified that I'm looking for housing. These, my dears, are real pearls. They're cultured, but they're real pearls. They cost $400 back when I was 110 pounds, almost an alcoholic, really close to being an alcoholic, working 12, 14 hours a day. I had to dress like I was straight. And so, because I was under the influence and because I was never in the same town twice and because when I love women I commit to women and because men are easy um, I sought companionship and physical touch with men and felt extremely guilty about betraying the lesbian community and we'll go into that more in the future but I worked very hard and bought these pearls. It took me weeks to pay for them. With all the shit that I've gone through, all the stuff I've lost, the times I was backed into a corner and had to perform as a sex worker to keep myself in shelter and I was threatened with the police if I didn't. With all that I went through, I never gave these up. 
Now this is a little piece of ballast. Somebody who knows more about trains is going to have to explain this to you. The BNSF Railroad goes right through Fort Sumner where I used to live. And these little glass beads, balls, are ballast. I guess they throw them off the train, I don't know, when they need to lighten the load, I don't know. I don't know what the little silvery colored thing is that I put on the bottom of it. But I made this out of some copper wire and stuff to put on my pearls. Um, my little sweater, I got this for like $2 at the local thrift store. I was very surprised to see something this pretty at that thrift store and bright, you know, and just shiny. Um, it seems to be a very good way to pick up pearls because women are always asking to pet me. So, and the dogs were a big success tonight. They had a very good time. I let them out during a break between the performance and the dance and let them meet everybody. And here's the trip. You know, um, the box has arrived in England and I looked on a map today on Google and found a, an actual decent Mexican restaurant not far from M's house. And they have Dos Equis beer. It's not cheap. Looks to me like, if I understand pounds and dollars, it looks to me like it's probably more than three, probably close to four dollars a bottle. But it's Dos Equis beer. Well, I was out in the parking lot this evening. Before the performance started, there was a whole little cluster of dykes. Like I used to do, you know, we ran in a little pack. Cackling out in the parking lot. And I don't know, I, I said something, and next thing I knew, I was in a conversation with this old little pack. Just like the old days. You want a beer? Opened up the trunk and handed me a Dos Equis. So I took a photo of myself before I went to send it to M. And she noticed the gleam in my eye. And that's because I was on the verge of tears because it's a very powerful thing to liberate, to liberate yourself from so much isolation. The community in Albuquerque has changed very much since I was there. And it's safe to play now. It wasn't safe for a single woman before. But it's safe now. I'm very encouraged by the young people. Oh, and the other thing is that um, M said that I had, I think it was a wicked grin. It's because this is part of phase two. It's because I need to learn how to love. So the look you saw on my face was for you, Em. You were with me all night tonight. You were right here with me. You would have loved it. I'm very impressed. It's a good community. It's healthy and rich and diverse and vibrant and loving and interested and interesting and intellectual and thoughtful and artistic. It's very vivid. You're right, they're very colorful people. Brr. I better put this up. I don't want to get out of bed and change clothes. I may sleep in my girl clothes tonight. What do you think? Oh, and this. Try to make a little sound. So I went kind of funny tonight just because I didn't know what I was going to meet when I was out there. And I'm an old toothless woman that's kind of funny looking anyway, and I didn't want to make a fool of myself. So I figured I'll go romantic. 
three trans men. So I haven't lost it yet. But if I don't get one pretty soon, I may lose it yet. Y'all take care. And thanks for being supportive, everyone. I don't know what happens next. Oh, I had a very long talk with um, a mutual friend of my exes and mine. He was very involved in a transgender group in Albuquerque. Long talk with her. She's the one that we found each other on Facebook and friended each other. <coughs> Excuse me. And she started posting um, stuff about atheism. And I went, oh, yeah, I can learn about atheism. And that's how I ended up on YouTube, basically. Uh, we had a long talk about M and even about my ex and what my plans are. And she's pretty wired for me. She's pretty excited. So am I. I didn't know you lived that close to London. The English Channel? Let's see. The hop, skip, and a jump to Europe? Now, to earn a living so I can get a work visa. So I'd better contact that woman at Ms. Magazine. My life has exploded. Because I decided to love. Ooh, it's really cold. Bye. I forgot to tell you, a very pretty bee. Bee. You know, like yellow and black stripes. A very pretty bee. Did the most excellent old school striptease tonight. It's fantastic.